My goal was to write a definitive account of Jacqueline Novogratz and her experience creating the Acumen Fund, which is an organization that funds entrepreneurs in the developing world. And when I got the green light for the story, this was back in about June, I reached out to Jacqueline's team at the Acumen Fund and asked where she'd be traveling this summer. They told me that she was going to be in Pakistan, and so I jumped at the chance to visit her there because Pakistan is such a fascinating country for all the obvious reasons. <laughs> incredibly beautiful. People wear incredibly colorful clothing, and so wherever you go, you see these beautiful, bright colors. There's a really high fertility rate in Pakistan. It's got one of the highest fertility rates in the world. So women there have a lot of children. Truck drivers drive around in these trucks that are painted with all kinds of beautiful images and lyrics from songs and prayers. And so you can be in the dustiest, most desolate part of the country and see these beautiful rolling works of art. It's also a really difficult place to do business and that was really key to my understanding of what Jacqueline and Acumen does. So this is the world's sixth most populous country. This should be an incredible place for foreign investors in particular. However, they have a real problem with access to capital, they have a problem with corruption, there's no rule of law. So I was able to hear firsthand from the people there some of the challenges and opportunities of doing business in Pakistan. The $20 billion question, so to speak, in Pakistan is basically what works there. I mean, this is a country where over the past decade, the U.S. has donated $20 billion in aid, and yet 24% of the people there live under the poverty line. And it's a widely held conclusion that our form of aid does not work there. It doesn't get to the people it's supposed to get to. It doesn't create the services and the infrastructure that the people there need. It's not helping with any of their real systemic problems. So what Acumen Fund is doing is using philanthropic dollars to invest in entrepreneurs there who are filling the gaps that the government has created. The question is, 10 years in, does it work? Is business the key to addressing these social issues in these parts of the world? And what I can see from having been there is it's an incredibly valiant effort in a part of the world where doing business is really, really difficult between the power grids and the corruption and the access to capital. But it's also an incredible place. People that I met were so hungry for attention from the outside world that was positive. There's so many smart, incredibly well-educated people there. There's such an appetite for entrepreneurship, for self-reliance, for people to be able to create businesses themselves, to be not uh, beholden to foreign aid. Jacqueline was completely at ease in her environment. She doesn't travel with a security detail. She doesn't have a huge entourage. She is on the ground with maybe one other member from the Acumen team, someone locally who speaks Urdu. She has no barriers between her and average people there. And I think that really speaks to what Acumen is trying to accomplish and the purpose of these visits for her. She doesn't want to be an executive who's you know, sitting in an office in lower Manhattan getting reports from the field from her colleagues. She wants to be in the weeds of her investments. It's interesting to draw a comparison to what, say, people in the State Department do when they go to Pakistan. When people are working there as part of the U.S. government, they often have, like, major security details. They have, they live in these compounds that are very secure for all of these obvious important reasons. But I think that they have a lot less exposure to everyday people and everyday issues than someone like Jacqueline has just talking to regular people. It really educates her on what people really need there and what her, what her investments can actually bring to the country. I've traveled to remote parts of the world before and you can always find some expat wandering around. You can always hear American music or see somebody in a Gap t-shirt. But what really struck me about Pakistan was that there were really no foreigners there. It made my experience traveling with Jacqueline that much more fascinating because I could see her in this atmosphere that was so foreign, um, where there's so much distrust between both countries at the time that we were there, and see her acting in her element completely at ease in this otherwise incredibly foreign environment. You gotta go close on their face so they can see it like this.